Maureen Barron, an uh, educational consultant for the English Montreal School Board. For me, it's the ability, the knowledge, and the competence to be able to function in the digital environment and space and world as responsibly and knowledgeably as somebody does in the physical space. So what I tell students very often is if you can do it in real space, you can do it in cyberspace or digital space. If you can't do it in one, you can't do it in the other. But the kids very often don't get that. I see people make, taking decisions or actions based on things that they have read, seen, or heard online that they are accepting as truth no matter what, with no sense of maybe I should question this. We would never consider sending kindergarten children out to the schoolyard to play without giving them some boundaries, some advice, some ideas on how they're expected to behave out there. It's the same thing with going on the internet, with using any of the tools or the devices that we give the kids. We need to give them boundaries, strategies, ways to stay safe, and knowing how to behave in those areas. So that's why I do think it needs to be in the schools. But I also think the parents need to share in the responsibility. I was called into a high school. There were issues, especially in the grade eight and the grade nine, where students were using inappropriate language and the students who were receiving the messages were misinterpreting or interpreting things so differently that basically you had a little verbal war going on. And many of the students were being emotionally hurt. The school was worried with exams coming up that this was a horrible distraction for the exams and they needed it diffused. And although they, the school was doing a tremendous amount to diffuse it, it still was not being quelled completely and they felt that an outside person coming in may be able to give it a bit more force. Uh, the worst thing we can do as adults is going in and giving them a list of no's. No, don't do that. Don't do this. You mustn't and things like this. You can tell them you can't do certain things, but you have to give them alternatives. You have to give them other ways to get where they want to go or what they want done. They don't always listen. We know that. That's all part of adolescence. But you have to keep trying. Right. Like I tell parents, the very worst thing you can do is threaten to take away the device, take away the phone, take away the tablet, because the kids would rather suffer in silence and deal with the cyberbullying and, and all the embarrassment than give up their device. And I tell the kids, I understand. It's your link to your social world. It's your link to your life. You can't give it up but you have to learn how to use it appropriately so that you control it. It doesn't control you. Uh, it's something that must be done. It's something that's part of our curriculum. It's there in the cross-curricular competencies. It can be intertwined with just about every subject area. It's a life skill that these kids need. We have to start giving it to them. The same way we teach the kindergarten kids the difference between a red light, green light, and yellow light crossing the street. We don't wait until the day before they get their learner's permit to drive the car. DC is the same thing. You need to start as soon as possible and just keep building. Very often it depends what's in the news. Okay. You know, what's the latest scare that somebody's come up with? What's the latest study that somebody's come up with? But this year I'm finding high school teachers, fake news. They all want to talk about fake news and what is it and where is it and how do you discern and, and things like that. In the spring of every year, it always is cyberbullying and sexting uh, because the kids are hormone driven, maybe, uh, especially cycle three at the elementary school, cycle one at the high school. With the younger students, it's usually more about information literacy elements. The kids have to understand your rules, your culture, your values around their behavior with the device that you model and that you expect. And don't give them a set of rules that says, if you do this, I'm taking away your toy. I'm taking away your phone. I'm taking away your device. If you do this, you're going to have to pay for that. Give them positive alternatives so that if you do this, I understand you've made a mistake. We're going to talk about it. We're going to help each. I'm going to help you get out of that mistake and turn it around and then we'll go from there so that the kids are not afraid of telling you what they're doing so to me it's a constant thing that we just have to keep maybe not totally on top of but always aware of so that it's being integrated and it's being discussed talked about demonstrated and taught at all levels on a regular basis